Okay, so this is a video about Blum, Bloom filters. Uh, so Bloom filters is a method um, for answering set membership. Um, so um, what uh, um, I want you to imagine is that we have some space of elements, let's say uh, uh, strings. So, so we have here cow. Okay, and then uh, we have uh, sets of elements denoted by S. So S is equal to, so that's X, and S is equal by s to a set of these elements. So let's say uh, tree, um, um, cow, uh, bird. Okay. So uh, what we want to um, answer is uh, if we're given an element and a set, we want to answer um, is the element in the set. So is the element cow in the set tree cow bird? So of course it's obvious in this case that the answer um, is, is true. Um, and uh, if um, it was not in the set, uh, we would want it to answer false. OK, but we want to do it in some very efficient way. So a uh, Bloom filter consists of uh, n Boolean values. OK, so it's an, ar an array of uh, bits, n bits. And uh, initially, all are set to be um, false. And um, then we have um, a k independent hash functions. So k independent hash functions are what we're going to use. And independent means that these functions are chosen at random, and we can think about them as basically for any input that they get. So let's say h0 of cow uh, gives us some number between um, 0 and um, n minus 1 at random, like, um, like a random a completely random choice uniformly between these n elements, okay? So that's, um, that's the main assumption. Okay, so um, to, um, to map um, elements in the set um, into our table, what we do is we use uh, these um, k um, hash functions to get k values um, that are indices into the table. And uh, we set these um, values to true. Okay, so if we want to install the two element S1 and S2, and we have uh, three um, hash functions, then uh, this is how it looks. Uh, we map S1 to three locations, we map S2 to three locations, and we set all of these um, locations to true. Now, if we get the element S1 again, then we'll just check whether all of the corresponding locations are true, and then we'll say it's there. Otherwise, we'll say it's not there. Okay, if one of the locations is not set to true, then we haven't seen it before. So we have two uh, types of errors to uh, worry about. The first uh, type of error is uh, false negative, and um, saying that an element is not there when in fact it is. That never happens in Bloom filters, right? Because uh, once we set the, the bits to true, they will always remain true. They'll never be set to false, and we'll always see that the element is there. Uh, false positive is um, the other type of mistake, um, other type of error, where we say that something is there when, in fact, it's not there. And that can happen. Let's see how that happens. Um, so here is an example. Here is a... Uh, uh, the first element that is mapped into three locations, and we set all of these locations to true. Uh, here is the second element mapped also to three locations with some overlap, uh, and you set this one to true. And now we see the third location, the third element, K, and um, uh, we see that all the locations uh, that it points to are already uh, true. So we um, decide incorrectly that the k has already been seen, is already in the set. Okay, so um, how do we analyze this? Uh, we're going to use um, three variables. n is the size of the table, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in this case. m is the number of elements, 3 in that case. 
and k is the number of hash functions. So how many m uh, points we map each element, and um, and that's also three. Um, and now let's calculate what's the probability of this um, incorrect detection. Okay, so uh, let's consider a particular place in our table, J, let's say this place, for example. And we want to say, uh, what's the probability that, um, that uh, the ith hash function uh, doesn't map does not set uh, bit j, so meaning it doesn't map to j. It's not equal to j, and that's very probable. It's one minus one over n because there is one place that would set uh, j, and then all the other places would not. Um, so from that we can say what's the probability that the bit j is just just not set by any one of the hash functions and any one of the m elements. So that we can bound by this probability up here, but raised to the power k for the number of hash function times m for the number of elements. Because this is kind of the number of tries that we had in order to set our particular bit j. Okay. And now we want to um, simplify it a little bit. So how do we simplify it? We use this uh, equation, which is basically the definition of the number e. So um, uh, e, uh, if you don't know, is equal to 2.71 dot dot dot. And um, as n goes to, becomes larger and larger, this um, expression becomes closer and closer to 1 over e. Okay, so using this, we can simplify what we had before, 1 minus 1 over n to the km. We can rewrite as 1 minus 1 over n raised to the power n. And all that then raised to the power km over n, right? Because uh, this n and this n cancel each other. And that's equal to e to the minus 1 to the km over n. That's from here. And then that just simplifies to this. Okay, so we have now a simpler expression for the probability that the bit j is not set. Now, when do we get a false positive? If all of the k bits that we are mapped to are already set, okay? So, um, so that probability is one minus e to the minus k m to the n, okay? So it's uh, uh, so it's one minus this probability because this probability is that it is not set, and all of that raised to the k, okay? So now, um, um, if we have a particular value of m, the number of elements we want to map. Uh, what should we use as k, and what is the size of the table that we need, okay, in order to achieve some probability, small probability of uh, failure. So um, if we uh, um, write this um, expression again, here is the expression that we had before, e1 minus e to the minus km over n to the k, that's, uh, that's the expression uh, we got before. And uh, now we're looking for the best k to put here to make this as small as possible. And it turns out that um, the best k is this value. And if you plug in this value uh, into e to the minus, if, if you plug in um, this, this value k here into the e to the minus k m over n, then you just get e to the this expression and then multiplied by n over m and then multiplied by m over n. So this cancels with this, and we're left with just e to the minus log e of 2, which is by definition half. Okay, so we have that everything inside here is a half, and now the probability of making a mistake is a half to the k. So, um, so um, it's a uh, half to this uh, ratio. Okay? So now, if we choose k optimally, we get that uh, the probability of uh, failure is 0 0.61 raised to the n over m. Okay, so after some algebraic simplifications, we get that n over m, the size of the table over the number of uh, elements, has to be at least 0 0.7 times log base 2 of 1 over p.